Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. All right, this video, a little un un unlike my other videos, usually I, if I buy a car, or I might talk about it for a while and go for it, but I've never been so conflicted, especially in a shorter time. Let me explain. <laughs> First of all, it's been a long work week. You can tell I haven't shaved anything this uh, this week, but this is regarding my 2019 Land Rover Range Rover Sport. If you're new to the channel or unfamiliar with this vehicle, it's the supercharged dynamic. It's got the V8, the five liter V8, that supercharged 518 horsepower, I believe, 461 pound-feet of torque. Super comfortable vehicle. It's got the off-road Land Rover, obviously the capability. The air suspension just makes it a nice long road trip vehicle that you can take. It's got the luxury features you come to spec with a Land Rover or sorry, Range Rover product because I get Range Rover is supposed to be like more little premium, right? But there's something about it. There's something about it that I just I'm just not in love with it. It, you know, people tell me, oh, it's be unreliable. And I was kind of going to it thinking it might be unreliable, and it hasn't. It's been decent with me so far. Granted that I've only put 3,000 miles on it. I bought it in March of 2023. And here we are 3,000 miles later. Why well, haven't been driving it very much? I don't know. What do I like about it? What do I don't like about it? And why am I not selling it? And what would it replace it with? So as of um, today, I put a vote out, and it's been like two days later. So people, have, I've asked, what would you like to see next on the channel? Now, I know the X5M F95 was going to rank high because I had an F85, and I sort of grew the channel based on X5. It was supposed to be car reviews, but I think I, the X5 content really took off. So no surprise that that took number one spot. But number two spot, I was surprised about the Porsche Cayenne Turbo. It seems like people are curious about that. And I've been curious about it myself. I don't need a Porsche Cayenne Turbo. I have, I have a sports car. I have a car that, that sort of feels that need. I have the M3, I got the Tesla. I, got, I feel like this are, these are first world issues, but why do I need a high performance SUV? I sold the X5 because I wanted something comfortable for the family. I wanted something that I could take, you know, I, I got all these tools. But if, if everything's aggressive and everything is raw, like you know, like I said, the Type R was a car that had hard suspension. It was a fun daily. Don't get me wrong, I love the Type R. But then I had the Type R, I had the M3. There was all those cars seemed to be in that same category. So I wanted different tools for those different things. If I, if I don't have multiple cars, then they should do different things, not try to all do the same thing. Does that make sense? And this is what brings me to the Range Rover is I like it and I bought it because it gives me a truck-like feel without being in a truck. I had a, I wanted a truck at one point, but when you, when you get behind the wheel of this, you feel like you're driving a tough vehicle. It feels like I'm, my family's in here, they're safe. It feels like if I need to go off road, I can. If I need to drop a tire off the pavement, I'm not afraid because I know the vehicle is built for it. I know how to handle it. What I don't like about the Range Rover, because I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about it, is this infotainment system. So this infotainment system and this is slow to respond. That's probably my main gripe. It's just slow to respond. And I was surprised to know that I don't have any adaptive uh, headlights. Now it's not a big deal to have that headlights, but coming from my Q7 and the, both X5s I had had that headlights, and surprisingly it doesn't. And these LEDs don't seem very bright to me. This is me, me and picky. But everything else about it is nothing. I mean, like I said, the engine the electronics haven't failed me at least yet. Um, the towing capacity is strong on this. 
and Land Rover even gives you instructions of towing. They even tell you like it gives you how to do the math, and it's surprising that you'll get that in the SUVs. Most SUVs saying, you know, vehicle not built for towing, but if you do, only tow this much. But not, but just a reminder, it's not built for it. And Land Rovers are just more like, do it, send it, you know, and and they even tell you. You know, they even have a, I can put a brake controller in here. It has the, the wire harness and underneath the dashboard, I can hook the brake controller up, which is surprising, especially in the SUV of this class. And, the, you know, it, it just give you an idea. They maxed out the tow rating in Europe at 70, was 3,500 kilograms because anything beyond that, you have to have um, a special license. So that tells me that the vehicle could probably do more because why 3,500 kilograms? Um, which kind of equates to 7,700, 7,716 7, pounds here. It's just unusual for me. What's been my radar? And I'll tell you what, I found a Porsche Cayenne Turbo, and I like it. I'm going to take a financial bath if I get rid of this Range Rover right now because I haven't had it less than a year. I did put a significant down payment down when I purchased it. At least a decent, you know, I covered the taxes. I'd like to cover, at least minimal cover taxes. And I put many miles on this car so it, you, know, you know that it can, hasn't, you think it had to depreciate it. But unfortunately, I bought it before the market corrected itself. And with that being said, if I sell it, I'm not going to get my money back out of this. Especially considering that I put the hitch on it. Um, did it added the tent, you know, I put a few thousand dollars into this Range Rover already. Now I, I make sure that the Porsche Cayenne has everything I want. And it, when I say everything, it has everything I want. If I were to spec this Porsche Cayenne, I would, it would, it would, this would be the exact one. The price is good. Um, I just... I'm on the fence because I know if I get the Porsche Cayenne and now with Lexi's X3, we sort of have these vehicles that are, everything's all performance oriented, like first. The Corvette, Tesla, Tesla's not a performance, Tesla's a commuter car, just get me wrong, it's a, it's a commuter car, but I'm just meaning like, if the going gets tough, if I say let's let's go to the, let's go to the mountains, Porsche can do it, T the X3 can do it, but when I have the Range Rover, I know this is the main vehicle that's going to do it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Maybe I should hold on to this a little bit longer. I haven't done many content with this yet. That, that like I said, that, that gives you an idea. And it's not, it's not bad. I have stuff done to it. I just haven't did much with it. That's why it wasn't content because I haven't been driving it. So, but let me know. Give me your thoughts, your opinions. I know X5 is going to be, but I feel like personally, I don't want to go the F95 route because for one, the, I want air suspension for, for reasons of the comfort. I like being able to, for my Q7, I like being able to just dial in the, uh, suspension. I feel like when you're in comfort mode, it really makes a soft suspension. The Cayenne, I don't know. I haven't driven a Cayenne, a late model Cayenne, to know for sure what it's like. Um, Space-wise, I don't know. Um, if the Cayenne's going to be more backseat room. If it's more backseat room, then that makes it easier for me. But you can see, I do have, considering here, I can sit. I got two fingers to put between the car seat and the rear headrest. And just give you how much room, front seat room is. I mean, you can't even see the plenty of front seat space, plenty of leg room. Because the back seat, um, why I like to sit back, you know, she's short, she likes to lean, <laughs> have her seat back. But plenty, I, you don't even know there's a car seat back there. So I don't want to get to something where, like her X3, for example, is good for short drives, but having being up against that dashboard when, you, when that car seat is pushed up, pushing you up there, I don't know if I want that. This is, I feel like this is first world problems for sure. Should I decide to keep my Range Rover over my Porsche? But 
I, I just, I, I haven't had a Porsche and they've always, I, this could be, they got to be their Porsches are so hard to find your spec when you're trying to buy these used. Doesn't matter what, what Porsche model you're looking for. But when you find the one, if you don't take it, and you're like, oh, I'll wait later until better. You'll never see that car again. And I noticed because before I bought my first X5, the Black 50i, if you're a long time viewer of the channel, before I bought my 2014, I found Cayenne Turbo, put in my spec. If I was going to do it, that was it. And I just wasn't positioned to buy because I was moving out of my apartment. And I was in the middle of trying to negotiate and buy this house. So, of course, if you're trying to buy a house, you don't want to just make a, bit, a purchase and buy a car that could change your debt to income ratio. So I had to wait until the house purchase was done. And then we ended up having to do a new construction because the um, resales were just selling like hotcakes out here in California. So I had to do new construction. That takes a while to build. It took about oh, how many like, like months? It took like eight, nine months to build this house. So during that time, I couldn't buy anything. I had to wait for it. And I watched that Porsche disappear from under me. And I thought, well, I'll just don't worry. I'll find another one. I never found another one. And I looked for, even when I bought my, looking for an X5M, I've been looking for, looking for, looking for. Never found one. And finally, another one pops up. Now, luckily, this is newer. But I'm just thinking, I know if I let it go, I'm not going to find another one like this. But I also know, is it worth the financial hit of leaving it. Anyway, I rambled long enough. Let me know what you think. All right, so let's go over these results too on, on this. So I obviously I said I talked about the X5M ranking high at 54%, but next was the Cayenne Turbo. And I put Audi SQ5, I meant SQ7, but I don't know if you guys are like the SQ7 anyway. Uh, so, and the X5M50i, I thought that would be a close second and it wasn't. But uh, the comments that I got, people were saying, <laughs> one guy said, he said, skip all these chick SUVs and buy a big truck. So, sorry, I, you know, maybe I just tried, like, I like chick SUVs. Um, I don't know what this is about them, but uh, I've been thinking about a big truck, but, you know, maybe I don't have the big muscles for it. I don't know. Let's see. And this one says, you know, I don't know why you don't have the performance Mercedes that should be like an AMG Mercedes. And I don't know the Mercedes, like the GLE and the GLE coupes and things like that. GLE AMGs, they don't appeal to me. I don't know what it is. They don't. And then don't be wrong. They have really they have the V8 engine, they good performance, but they, I don't know. They just, they don't, it doesn't hit the same way as, you know, these, these BMW and the Cayenne does and everything else. Um, someone says, you know, you own the X5M before go with the Porsche, the content would be cool. I, I agree. I think the content would be cool. I think I can do a lot of things with this, especially now I, I have that connection with some X5M. Maybe we can do some meetups and I don't know, some make some content, you know? And someone else said, you know, they watch my content based on the X5, uh, 50i. So of course, like I said, anything BMW, they're going to like. So I, I agree with that too. But anyway, uh, we'll see. Maybe I, I don't know. Part of me just says, a practical part of me says, keep Range Rover at least for another year. Make your decision. Obviously the prices aren't gonna go up anymore. Maybe I could start to really take my time. Maybe I'll do more test drives and then see if the direction I wanna go. Let me know what you think.